Hey, this is OXPF, and today we're looking at the Revival of Code 2023, which is the Python Discord taking a once one challenge per every two days step through the 2016 advent of code. So we're going to go back, we're going to look at a slightly slower pace at the challenges from 2016. I actually have never solved these, so I'm kind of excited to get them done. And uh, this year I'm going to be looking at them in a, I'm going to use Python, and I'm going to use a test-driven development approach. Um, I found an article on Real Python that kind of describes a simple setup for that and gives some templates. I modified those a little bit myself. I have now a script that will pull the input and create some template files for me, um, including a test file and a solution file. And uh, this video is just to go through that article, the approach, and the setup that we have. And then in the following videos, I will go ahead and start to solve the days. So uh, let's take a look at how we're going to do this this year. All right, so we're going to start by taking a look at this article on real Python. Uh, it's called Solving Your Puzzles, Advent of Code, Solving Your Puzzle with Python. If you're brand new to Advent of Code, this is a really great refresher. They kind of talk about the different puzzles, the kind of structure, what you might look at. Um, it's a good article worth reading. I'll make sure to include a link to it uh, in the notes below. Um, we're going to jump right to a starting template here. Oops, we're going to try to jump right to that. And uh, there we go. Um, and we're going to use, I'm going to use this template. I modified it slightly and we'll go over that in a minute. But basically the idea here is that we get a template here for solving. And then we also have a template here for tests and how we're going to run tests. And so one of the things I want to do this year is actually use PyTest, do kind of a test driven development thing. So the idea is um, you start your tests, you set up tests to say, uh, this when I give it this input, this should be the output. That immediately fails because I've not written any code to actually do that. But then I can work until my tests succeed. And then if I need to make changes later, I can make sure if my tests still pass, I know I haven't broken anything. I know it still does the thing I expect. So um, that's kind of the idea behind testers driven development. We're going to apply that in the advent of code this year. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, the rest of this, I mean, again, it's worth a read. It's worth a look if you want to take some time and look through it. Um, but that's the main thing I wanted to pull out. Um, I have taken that and I have now included that into, let's see, clear this, uh, clear this out here, um, into my gen day 16 script we'll go back up to the top here i'm going to walk through what this does um, this is a script i use just to start each day and so it's a bash script um, now i'm actually going to run it not by running the script itself but by doing dot gen day like this and what that's going to do is it's going to source this script and that allows me to um, do things like change directories and when i come out of the script i'm still in uh, that change is still happened versus if you run a script it happens in its own session and then when that script ends you leave and go back right where you were um, First thing we're going to do here is set up some variables. So basically the first input here, so whatever number I put here, uh, it's going to get the first, um, this right here basically is going to strip any leading zeros from it. And it's going to make sure that it's a number zero to 25. And uh, then if not, it's going to return. Uh, I probably put a message there. In fact, we'll do that. We'll say uh, echo invalid, inva invalid, Day input must be between one and twenty-five. In fact, we'll include it here. We'll see. Dollar sign J like that. That should work. And so now, if I do like this, I get uh, a zero. The leading zero even got stripped off. But you can see it says invalid day input. That must be between, must be between zero and twenty-five. So that'll be my check there. Um, in fact, maybe we'll just put one there so we get the actual uh, complete input. There we go. Um, it also is going to now we can make a project and now this is going to be of the, um, format day XX. So it's going to zero pad out the numbers and it's going to give me that. And I'm just kind of using bash expressions here to, to achieve these things. Um, if you don't understand what this does, because I'll be honest, I look at this, and I don't remember how I got this, but you could throw this into chat GPT and ask him what it's doing. And I'm sure it'll explain it to you. Um, Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose, if there's a dot session file, we're going to read the contents of that file into our AOC session variable. Um, if not, if you've already got, you know, one, one way to approach this would be to keep the AOC session variable in like your bash RC file. And then it will just, if you export it there, it'll just always be there. Um, or you can keep it in a file here. And basically if it's in the file, it's going to overwrite anything else that said it beforehand. Um, if it's not, it'll use whatever was there. Um, now, now it's going to check and see, does AOC, is AOC session set? If, it, if the file didn't exist and it wasn't there, then this is going to fail. It's going to tell us we can't continue. You need to set your session cookie. Um, then I'm going to actually validate the session by 
uh, doing a curl of the day one input using that cookie. And then I'm going to check, you know, it, basically it says if you're not logged in or if your cookie has expired, the message will say something about inputs differing by user in the contents of the file. And so if that's in that contents, or if I get this, you know, 500 server error in the file, like if my cookie is not valid, in fact, I can show you that if we do echo, uh, bad cookie into dot session, it's not that session. Okay. And now if we run gen day, let's say do a gen day on day one, we get an invalid session because the actual contents of this file is going to be a 500 server error. Um, and so we, that's just going to fail. Um, now we've kind of validated that we've got a working session. We've got, we actually retrieved the input. Um, so now we're actually going to start a project. Um, if the second argument is rust. So if I do something like gen day here and then do rust, uh, it'll start me a rust project. I did do the 2015 AOC all in rust and made videos about that. Um, I'll include a link to the, one of those here as well. Um, if you want to go check that out, I'm going to be doing it in Python this year. I know a lot of people have asked for Rust, but um, I've been doing a lot of Python development in my work, and I want to see if I can apply new concepts and keep pushing myself as a Python developer. So uh, not really a developer, but whatever, I'm pushing my Python skills. Um, but so I would, this is sort of what I would do for creating Rust stubs. Um, else, else, I'm going to go here into my Python. Um, I'm going to create, if the project directory already exists, I'm just going to go into that directory and return because I don't need to do anything else. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to make the directory. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to get the input stuff and save it to a file. And then I'm going to create this stub. And this is based on that. This is new this year, um, based on that article we just looked at. And the stub is basically going to have, um, and it's kind of messy here with all the escaping quotes. So I'm just going to go ahead and create one and we'll look at that there. Um, but we're also, so we'll save that into day, day.py. And then we're also going to create a testing stub here. And again, we're not going to, we'll look at the contents of this in a second. And that's going to be test day number dot pi. And so if we go ahead and run this, uh, oh, let's see, I actually have a valid session key. So we'll do move session dot back into dot session. And now if we go ahead and run this. You can see we're in day one. So we've changed into that folder. And if we look in that folder, we have day one dot pi input dot text and the test day one dot pi. So the input dot text uh, for this one, let's see, alt C is a bunch of left, left and rights with numbers. Uh, we have our day one.py, which basically here, so we have our stub parse function, our part one function, our part two function. The solve function is going to take the puzzle input. It's going to parse it and call it, save the result as data. And then part one is called part one on data to get solution one, part two on data to get solution two, and then return them both. Um, I won't always have to do it that way, but that is a very clean way of having functions that do a single thing. And it's going to make the testing much easier. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, in our in our if name equals main, this is a very common thing you'll see in Python. Basically, if this func if this file was run directly, the name the dunder name this thing will be equal to a dunder main. Um, this when you see double underscores before and after, that's said as dunder. Um, so when you see, then it'll say, okay, so if I ran this file directly, do this. If I imported this file, like say through the testing suite. Um, then this stuff won't run and I'll just have access to these functions, which is going to be useful. Um, so if we run this file, we're going to get an in file, which will either be this v one. So if I pass in a file name, then it's going to go if, if that length is long enough, or it's just going to get the path lib, the path of the current file. So this file itself, day one.py, the parent, which is just going to be day one, day oh one, and then slash input.txt. And so it's going to actually try to look for input.txt in the current directory if I don't tell it something else. Uh, then it's going to use pathlib again here to read this. Um, we really want to be moving away from this, you know, the with open file as f, f.read. Pathlib is much cleaner um, and it's just where py modern Python is going. So that's better, quote unquote. And I'm going to try to practice that in solving this year. Um, so we're going to read the puzzle and put the contents of that file into here. Uh, we're going to call solve and get both solutions. And then, you know, for now, there's a uh, default return none. The end of each function. So if I ran this right now, solution one and solution two would both be none. Nothing would print, but this would actually run. In fact, we're going to say uh, Python day one dot pi, and it runs. Nothing happens, but it runs. Um, so we'll, we'll look at our tests. Basically, um, I, now again, I've gotten this from uh, the uh, article I was just showing you, but I've modified it a little bit just to meet the needs I'm looking for. Um, they do it all by files. I like to actually go ahead and just get my input in the into this test file where possible. 
Um, because otherwise, if there's three tests for part one, I have to go create three files, example one, example two, example three, and then I have to create three fixtures to go with that. Um, and I'll explain fixtures in a second. And it's just kind of a pain versus most of the time I can fit all of it into one line. So what we're gonna do here, and this is let's let's take a look at one of these tests. When you're testing with PyTest, when I call PyTest, it's going to look for files that start with test something, and then it's going to look for functions in there that start with test underscore something. So here I have test part one, and this function right here. It's got two decorators on it. This first one, PyTest marks skip, not implemented. Um, that means don't even bother running this test, just skip it. So right now this test isn't going to do anything. Um, this mark, PyTest mark parameterized is going to say, hey, I'm going to have these two variables, puzzle input and expected. And then for each Thing in this list, run the test with this being puzzle input and this being expected. And so what this will really look like for part one, for example, if I grab this, we will get rid of, well, let me just show you, well, I'll show you real quick. Um, if we run PyTest right now, you'll see we skip all six tests. And so, but there are six tests. And so you can see that's actually because there's three here and three here. Now they're done empty tests, but they are there and they're getting skipped. Um, so if what I'm going to do, as soon as I read this part one, and I'll go into that in the part one video, but as soon as I read part one, I'll come in here and I will get rid of this and I'll replace it with something that looks like this. Let's make this go away. So now I have a test case where my input is R2 comma L3. And then I know from the, in, the from what, pi, uh, what the advent of code page says that the result should be five. And if the input is R2, 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 the, the result should be two. And now, and you know, same thing with this. So now if I run PyTest, and you'll notice I also removed that skip, now we fail. Uh, that's what we want. We want to fail here. And you, we scroll up to the top, we can see fail, 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 skip, skip, skip. So six tests, these are still getting skipped and part the part two ones, and the part ones are failing. And we want to fix that. And then when we fix that, we know we've got a valid solution. And we can scroll to the bottom here, and there's a lot of loud output, but if we come to the very bottom, there's a summary. And we can see test part one on R2 L3-5, whatever that means, assert none is equal to five. So it's saying, if we come down here and we say assert, this parsed input is going to be equal to expected. And we return none because we didn't do anything yet. Uh, and we're trying to say it should be equal to five. And then we say, you know, none is equal to two and none is equal to 12 because we're looking to see in our tests, we're going to take our input, we're going to parse them. Uh, you can see up here, we import day one as AOC. So we call the AOC.parse and we get the parsed input and then we call I guess we're from part one, Par pass parsed input into part one, and the result should be five, two, 12, uh, but it's not, right now it's none. And so now I've got myself set up in a position where I can go ahead and actually develop the code. So come over here, you know, we can test this and we say, um, in fact, I'll just watch, let's, let's do just while we're playing with PyTest, we can say return, well, <laughs> now this has not solved the challenge, but if we come here and run PyTest again, we come back over the top, we will see fail, fail, and then the green dot actually means one of our tests passed. Um, and so if we come to the bottom here, we'll see, you know, assert 12 equals five, assert 12 equals two. One of them used to say assert, would have said like none equals 12. We actually have solved one of them, but we've not solved all of them. This is not a valid solution. I'm just showing you that if we do return values here, uh, that, that'll start to make our test pass. So I think that's where I'm gonna call this video. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off here. Um, this is meant to just be my introduction to how I'm going to work through the video, the, uh, the, what do they call it? Revival of code uh, in 2023, which will be over the course of about two months doing the advent of code from 2016. And uh, I'm gonna create a playlist with all the videos here. And every couple of days, I'll try to put out the next video and uh, we're gonna use this strategy. So um, if you wanna do it with me, that's awesome. Um, you know, Join the Python Discord. There's people talking about it there. Um, leave me comments in here. Tell me you're doing it or hit me up on Twitter and uh, send me your code. I'd love to check it out. Um, this should be fun. Uh, thanks, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.